Have you ever wondered how to turn this into this? My name is Mary Jane, and I'm going to show you how on today's episode of Cooking with Mary Jane. Now, before we get started, you should know that I am a legal marijuana user. I have my medical card in the state of Nevada. So if you're lucky enough to live in Colorado or Washington, you can just bank away. In other states, make sure you check with the appropriate authorities to find out if you're authorized to make can of butter. Okay? Great! In order to make delicious baked goods, like these cookies infused with marijuana, the best way to get the THC, which is the active ingredient in the marijuana, into your baked goods is by making special butter, known as canna butter, which is butter infused with cannabis, just like it sounds. So what I'm going to show you today is how to make canna butter. And it's actually a fairly easy process. You're only going to need a few simple items that can be obtained at any grocery store. You'll need a saucepan, a wooden spoon, your marijuana, some high fat content European butter. This is Irish butter. For whatever reason, Europeans put more fat content in their butter, which is good for us because THC binds to fat molecules. So the more fat molecules there are to bind to, the stronger, more potent, the can of butter will be. You're gonna need a coffee grinder to grind up the weed. You're going to need a bowl to put your ground weed in. Some cheesecloth to strain out the weed from the butter. Cheesecloth can be purchased at any supermarket or home goods store. A large mixing bowl, some clips, and some saran wrap. Oh, and you'll also want a pair of rubber gloves because you don't really want to touch the can of butter as it could be easily absorbed through your skin and you would be high for a month. Oh, and the most important thing you need when cooking anything is a cocktail. Because as anyone who's ever watched a cooking show knows, any good chef worth his or her salt gets wasted while they're cooking. And I'm certainly no exception. I'm enjoying a delicious Bloody Mary Jane. So if you're ready to join me on our cooking adventure, cheers. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is decide how potent do you want your can of butter to be? The usual recommendation is to use a quarter ounce of weed per stick of butter. Now, since we're using this European butter that doesn't come in sticks, it's a full pound, which is four sticks, which would be four quarter ounces, which would be one ounce of weed per pound of butter. You can use more if you want. I've done that before in the past. All I'm saying is proceed with caution because edibles can sneak up on you. Take it from me. It's happened to me before. I like to know exactly how much medicine I'm getting with my cookies. Um, as mentioned, I have a medical card. I have terrible insomnia, and I actually do use these cookies to help me sleep. I find eating a cookie before bed will keep me down for about eight hours. So as long as I stay to a regular dosage, I'll know where I'm at with these cookies. So I'm just gonna use one ounce for this one pound of butter. Like I said, if you wanna use more, go ahead, do your thing. Another thing to keep in mind though is what type of uh, plant matter you're using. A lot of people will just use their old shake or trim from harvesting their plants, the leaves and stems, because there's a lot of THC in that and it's great. You can't smoke it, but it's great for, for making edibles. But I'm using Primo Grade, Sour Diesel Kush Bud. This ain't no shake, this is quality stuff. Mm, only the best for me. Do I look like I would make butter with shake? Hell no. Anyway, that being said, these are gonna be a little bit stronger, or this butter is gonna be a little bit stronger than if I were using shake. So, keep that in mind too. But, it's not all top shelf stuff here. I do have this uh, leftover powdery vape stuff that I've already used in my vaporizer. Probably most of the THC has already been extracted from it, but there may be just a little bit more left in there. I don't want to waste anything. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in there. It'll only even out the uh, 
amazingly intense effects of this super potent, super sticky bud. Now, we want to grind up the bud in this coffee grinder. And why do we want to do that? Well, it's simple. You want more surface area for the THC in the weed to be able to bind to those fat molecules in the butter. Because that is how THC is activated, by binding with fat molecules. So go ahead and break up. If you're using nugs like I am, break them up into your coffee grinder. Any old coffee grinder will you do. This is just some uh, thing I got at the local supermarket, nothing fancy. Put that into your grinder and go to town grinding. Now, no need to go crazy grinding it. You don't need to turn it into a powder, but you want to get a fairly fine grind. As mentioned, you want more surface area to bind to those fat molecules. And if you're going through all this trouble, you do want to make sure that you're actually making good butter, right? Only the best in my kitchen, as mentioned. I think this is about fine enough. I don't know if you can see this, but it's a fairly finely ground mix. I'm just gonna add that to my bowl here with, oh, remember I put all that nasty baked meat in there. So this ought to balance it out and make it into a pretty good batch. Well, that's one nugget down. I've got quite a few more to go. And I'm sure you've got better things to do with your time than sit around watching some bimbo grind up nuggets of weed. Hmm, actually, maybe you don't, if you're anything like me. But hey, guess what? That would make for a boring video. So I'm gonna go ahead and grind this weed, and I'll see you again in just a minute. Okay, I've just ground my last grinder full of weed. I'm just gonna scoop it all out into my bowl here. As mentioned, it's all fairly finely ground. And because I'm a budget-minded lady, some might say cheap-ass lady, I prefer to say I'm like the Indians, I use every part of the buffalo. Anyways, I'm going to scrape out every last little bit of wheat out of my coffee grinder. Waste not, want not. There are sober children in Africa. Oh. Hey, now that I've got all that... Oh wait, hold on a minute. Don't think you can hide from me. Yeah, now I've got all my ground weed into this bowl, ready to go and be added to the butter. So now that I've ground all the marijuana up finely, I filled this saucepan half full of water and I put it on the stove and brought it to a boil. Now that the water is boiling, I'm gonna go ahead and add the finely ground marijuana to the boiling water. And I'm gonna get every last bit out of here because you know how I am. Nothing is wasted at Mary Jane's place. Once I've got all that weed in there, I'm gonna turn the temperature down to low and bring this down to a simmer. And I'm gonna leave it simmering uncovered for one hour. So now that this weed and water has been simmering for an hour, it's time to add the butter to the mix. So I'm gonna take my pound of Irish butter and plop her in. <laughs> Dump her down, as some might say. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, and just look how much butter's left on the wrapper. You know me, I'm gonna use all of that. Because not only do I not want to waste, but I also wanna make sure I get all the fat I can to bind with that delicious THC. I want these cookies to be very effective. These are going to be top shelf, first class, A number one, primo grade can of butter cookies. All right, so now I'm just going to melt this butter down into this water weed mixture. Once it's completely melted down, I'm going to bring it back to a simmer. Cover it and leave it for an hour. So let's catch up in an hour. Okay, so now our butter, water, and weed mixture has been simmering covered for an hour. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off the heat and let it 
cool completely back down to room temperature and then bring it back up to a simmer. Simmer it for an hour. Cool it again and then simmer it again for an hour. You're going to do that three times total. The more times you do that, the more potent the can of butter becomes. So I'm going to go ahead and do it all three times. If you don't have time, I suppose you could just simmer it once, but you know me. I want this to be top shelf butter. So I'm going to let this cool to room temperature, then I'll bring it back up to a simmer. I'm going to do that three times, and I'll catch up with you after all of that.